Well, how's it going, everyone? Thank you for stopping by. They call me. I haven't done that intro in a while. How's it going? <laughs> uh, welcome back to another episode of Packing House. Yeah, I'm back. He's back. He's back in the flesh. Back in the friggin' flesh. He's back from his trip. Um, there's been a little bit of changes in this series a little bit. Like, I did a, a, an entire day off camera because I forgot I was re I forgot I was not recording, so F me in the face. But that's all right. You didn't miss much. You just missed money and all that. <laughs> Anyways, welcome back, everybody. It's good to be here. Is our guy? Oh, shoot. Our guy's going to be here in a sec. Hang on. Hold that thought. There he is. He's actually... Yep, he's here. He just pulled in. Good for him. This is actually perfect timing, because then you get to see a little bit of... Oh, my effing God. Okay, I hate I hate this. Just grab, just grab it. Just grab it. Walk out the door. And just put it in. Yeah, so I'm back. I'm back from the trip. And, um... It's good. It was good. It was a good trip. It was a good trip. Uh, am I happy to be home? Absolutely. <laughs> I am so happy to be back. I'm so happy to be home. Uh, it's good to go away, but like it's also good to come home. You know, home is where the pigs are. Home is where the dogs are. Home is where, you know, I don't know. I got small things in my life, all right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't have the, the, the biggest things going on, I guess. You know, the, the channel is like the biggest thing in my entire life right now, right? That might be sad to hear for some people, but, like, I love it. So, F off. But, um, yeah. I uh, had a good trip. Went through a couple experiences that I've never gone before in my entire life. Um, and I'll get into that here in a sec. Because I think I was violated. <laughs> By TSA. Yeah, it's a TSA story. You already know, it's a TSA story. You, you can probably guess where this is about to go, right? Yeah, I just want to get some of these packages out as fast as possible. How much time do I have left? I should have, like, a little bit of hour. Like, one more. Maybe it might get one more package out there. We do have the two-hour waiting period, Grace, for the for the truck here. So, that, that's helping us a little bit. Let's see here. Uh, not so Medium. Other than that, had a good time with the wife. Went by super fast, which I hate sometimes. You know, like, you, you have all this time, and you're like, oh. You know, it, it just time goes by so fast when you're having fun. Shoot me, right? It is what it is. Time goes by fast when you're having so much fun. There we go. Let's do that. Hang on a sec. There we go. But yeah. Again, good to be back. Good to be. And like, one thing that some people don't like. Like, even for me. And I think this is actually. Hang on a sec. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this out fast enough. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Give me a moment. Let me put this in. Okay, I'm not going to get this in. Sorry for the F word. Ah, damn it. Nope. Anyways. Um, I guess that will go out tomorrow. $3,000. Hey, $3,000. We have $5,654. Um, one thing, and I, I'll i admit it to you. I'll admit it to you. Um, one thing is, is that last weekend was very good in the sense of I busted ass to make sure there was a lot of videos coming out while I was gone. Some people probably didn't even know I was gone. That's how many videos came out, right? Some people probably had no idea that I was gone for an entire week, which is good. That's very, very good for me, right? Um, but for the people that were like yelling at me in the comment section saying, do this or do that, or I told you to do this, or why haven't you played this game again? All I could say is like, just hold on. <laughs> Let me get back. But um, anyways, where I was going with this was, um, I think this happens to a lot of new YouTubers out there, is, is um, what is it? Routine. Uh, the routine is a big thing. And um, one, I was out of that routine for a week, right? And when I got back home, I was like, whew, I got to go back into the routine, right? I have to go back into it. And um, that's a hard thing to do sometimes. And maybe even when people go to work and then they have like a week off and they're like, damn, I'm not looking forward to going to work tomorrow, right? It's it's that whole routine thing. It's like, damn, here we go, right? Um, and I think a lot of new YouTubers, you know, I, I think consistency, they don't, they don't show it, right? They don't show the consistency, not to their viewers, but mo mostly to themselves. And so it can be very easy for them to fall out, right? Fall out of it. 
And, uh, you know, sometimes that happens. Uh, and even for me, I'll admit, like, when I got back home, I'm like, all right, time to bust out some videos. And I'm like, procrastinating it. Like, I'm like, oh, but I have to uh, pet the dog. Oh, I have to feed the, the pig for a few hours. <laughs> You know, uh, and that, that, that is just, I think that's just a natural human thing, you know, it's not that I don't look forward to it. It's just getting back into a routine. It can be hard sometimes, you know, but when you are in the routine and you're into the routine and that's something that I told myself constantly, I'm like, it might feel weird or it might feel bad that you're going into the routine, but once you're in the routine and you get back into it, everything's fine. And that's basically what's happened is like, everything's fine. Right. Anyways, back to what I was saying about TSA. I'll give you a little back backstory here. So Danielle and I, before we went on this trip, right, we were checking the weather and we were seeing if, if how the weather was going to be. And last week, most of you guys know, there was like this giant cold front that came through, not just where I live, but like, I want to say almost the world, like the country or something. I don't need that. Put that down. Um, it was just a giant cold front and we, it was very unexpected. And we looked at the temperatures and we looked at the weather and we're like, wow, it's going to be cold where we're going, you know? By the way, if you follow me on Instagram, you guys know where I went. Um, plug. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, um, I, uh, gosh darn it. I, I had, I only have like a couple pairs of pants and like maybe a couple pairs, like two or three pairs of pants and like two pairs of shorts maybe. And, um, you know, for like gone for five days, five. Yeah. It was like about five days gone that long. Um, I kind of need a little bit more pants, right? Probably <laughs> like two, two pants is not going to be good for five days, especially if we are going and it's cold, right? So Danielle was like, she was, she, she, the week before she went and bought me new pants, which I was like, oh, cool. Thank you. Awesome. So she got me new pants, nothing too crazy. Just like some cheap pants from Ross and they're I usually like to wear black pants, so they were like black pants. And uh, I've been to, been in airports hundreds of times, been through TSA hundreds of times. I know the routine. It can be intense depending on where you live. I don't know. It might be different. But where I live, going into an international airport, um, it can be intense and it, and it can be fast and if it can it can be quick. And um, you, you, you got to like. Go, 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 right? You, you got to keep it moving, folks. Got to keep it moving, folks. Got to keep it moving, folks. And um, so I know the routine. Like, I know what to expect. And usually when I go to, through TSA and things like that, I'll wear the most inconvenient clothing items for myself. What I mean by that is, like, I'll wear, like, joggers. Like, you know, jogger pants. Um, so they don't have, like, belts or medals or whatever the heck they're on. And, and then I'll wear... Crocs so that I can just slip those off and put them in the tray, you know, and make it very very simple and easy on myself I don't need to have laces. I don't need to untie my shoes or anything like that Um, I won't wear jacket because you know, they say take off your jacket take this off and, and things like that I usually wouldn't wear a hat Because of the same reason, you know, uh, just I, I would try to make it very minimal for myself and just keep everything very smooth so that when it was my turn to put stuff in the tray and keep the conveyor belt going that I wouldn't be the guy holding up traffic typing because that that's like a huge anxiety fear of mine like I don't want people waiting on me it's embarrassing whatever etc cetera, etc cetera. um so yeah um, I've always in the past were able to like you know plan that out ahead of time now for some reason I decided to go against everything I have ever stand for <laughs> Not that I stand for, but I decided to say, you know what? No, I'm going to wear what I want to wear. I'm going to wear my casual things. I'm going to wear my pants. I'm going to wear a jacket. I'm going to wear a hat and hell. I'm going to wear shoes that have freaking laces on them. I'm going to show these people what I what I'm all about. Probably one of the worst decisions I've made. <laughs> um, Cause then that's when bad things happen to me at TSA. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I decided, you know, I, I wore the new pants. I, I wore the new pants because I was like, oh, Danielle bought me new pants. I'm going to wear the new pants, right? 
and I decided to wear Converse, I decided to wear shoes with laces, and I did. I wore the Converse, I wore the shoes, I wore the laces, did not go with Crocs, wore the pants, and all that. And um, I didn't wear a belt. That was one thing I didn't do, because I was like, you know what, I know taking off on and off a belt, it'll be it'll be hard, so, not hard, but it just, it'd be more added time to already what I'm putting on myself anyways. So I said, you know what, I won't wear the belt. So like, my pants are falling down half the time, but, but everything else I wore, right? We get into TSA, we get into, uh, we get into our line, start going through TSA. You know, and if you've ever been through TSA, like I said, it, I think it depends on where you live. Um, but like, it starts, you know, you, you, you it starts to get intense. Did I put two phones yet? It starts to get intense. People start breathing heavily. People start getting antsy. People start getting impatient. Um, people start like everyone. It's like at the DMV. Everyone's pissed off. Like, damn it, we have to go. We all have to go through this. Well, yeah, but like, let's not be too damn sour about it <laughs> like we all have to go through it let's not make it more stressful for one another right it's literally almost it's like it's like if you went to the dmv and then instead somebody pulled you to the side and said let me grab your you know what it's practically what tsa is <laughs> in a sense yeah you can see where i'm heading with the story already so we get in the line i take off my 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 jacket i take off my shoes I put them in the tray. What else do I do? I, um... It's a big box for little nothing, right? I take off my jacket, my shoes. I uh, take all my stuff out of my pockets, put it in the tray. Feeling all good about myself. I'm like, you know what? Come at me. And I go into the big circular x-ray thing. I don't know what it's called. I mean, I know it's an x-ray machine, but I don't know what that exact x-ray machine is called. I go into it, and if you've ever been into it, you have to, like, stand with your legs spread, and you have to have your arms up like that, and, and you know, and, um, I walk into the, and, you know, Danielle's in front of me, I let her go first, because, you know, ladies first, um, really, more or less, it's me kind of sitting in the back, because I don't want someone yelling at her, because she's taking, you know, girls, they have to dress you know, <laughs> they have to dress the way they need to dress. So, like, I'll stand behind her so that somebody's not like, oh, my God, hurry up. You know, it's like, shut the hell up. So, she goes in first, does her thing, and she goes out. She's fine. And then it's my turn. So, I go into it. I'm like, hey, here we go. Let's get it. Um, did I? I ordered my thing. Yeah, no. I thought I did. Did I already use all of it? Maybe. Um, actually, I didn't. Um... So I go in, and the lady's like, uh, sir, can you take your hat off and hold it above your head? I'm like, yeah, take my hat off, hold it above my head. I'm not going to be able to do this anyways. There's only two orders I'm not going to be able to do. That's fine. Um, and then, like, I, I, I get scanned, right? I get scanned. And for some reason, as soon as I start walking out of this like circular tube, you know, x-ray machine. This guy gets into my face, like the TSA guy. He's like, sir, is everything, oh God. Says, sir, is everything out of your pockets? I said, yes. He says, are you sh positive, sir? I said, yes, everything's out of my freaking pockets. And he turns me around, he says, look at this. And he shows me the screen. For some reason, there's this giant red glowing i don't want to call it radiation cuz i don't know what it's what the technical term is but like there's this giant red glowing sensor that's going off on my genitals <laughs> i don't know why i i do not know why every part of my body was clean except for this giant red area on my genitalia and I look at him he says sir you see what that screen says and I'm like well it looks like there's something in my crotch <laughs> he says yes exactly sir and I say I I say I have nothing there I promise you he says are you sure I said yeah he comes up to me very close and he says I'm gonna give you one chance to tell me the truth 
He says, if you have something there, take it out. And like the only thing that's like, I'm, I'm thinking of a smart ass thing here. I'm like, you want me to pull my penis out? <laughs> but, but I'm just like, I'm just thinking in my head, I was being a smart ass. And uh, he's like, you have one chance to be honest with me and to pull, take it out. And I say, I have nothing there. I have nothing to hide. And he says, okay. He says, I'm going to ask you one more question. I said, okay. And he says, do you want me to take you to a private room? And again, my smart ass thinking, I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Is this a date, dude? Um, I was like, no, I don't want you to take me to a private room. And I guess they have to ask that, right? They have to ask that for everyone for you know, their, their next thorough search and everything. And, um, what's messed up about all of this is that the people in line are like behind and they have to stop the entire line. They have to stop the entire line for you to get handled with. And so people are like pissed off in the background. People are like behind me, like this freaking idiot, this guy. And I'm like, I, I don't know what's going on. That's all I can say. Right. Is like, I have no idea what's going on. I don't have anything. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I just trying to catch my flight. My flight leaves in like 30 minutes. I still got to go stand in a long ass line at Starbucks that I'm not looking forward to, but the wife needs to do it. And I got to be there. And might as well, I'm there. I might as well pick up a coffee while I'm there. So I'm going to complain about the long line, even though I am secretly going to be getting myself and own coffee, but I'm going to be like, is this worth it? Danielle, she's going to be like, yeah, it's worth it. And I'll be like, yeah, whatever. We got to catch our flight in 30 minutes. I still have to have that conversation after this TSA thing. You see where my frustration started to lie in here. <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, I, I say, I say, I, I have nothing to hide, dude. You don't need to take me to no private room. We can do this right here, right now. And the son of a gun. Guess what he did? He did it right there, right now. But real quick, before we dive into that story more, did we buy, we bought the shop Shingo, or Shopingo. So the next thing we need to buy is iShop, right? iShop, where's our competitor? Whoa, whoa, whoa. How much money do we have, yeah? 7,000, we could buy it. Yo, let's do it, we're sending it, we're gonna buy it. Marketplace, no, no, no. No, no, no. Let's buy one competitor, now, we have one competitor left. So then I wonder if we can actually, um, I say gouge, let's do it. Let's go through these real quick. Let's gouge, not gouge prices, but like, let's see if we can get the full uh, potential out of them. So keyboard. Oh baby. Oh baby. Okay, keyboard. Sorry, mouse. Okay. Um, iPhone or L phone. There we go. And monitor. And we did not do the digital camera. 198. And the digital camera. Oh, the money. This money is going to come in hot. There we go. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, let me just grab the orders real quick. Orders and print. Anyways. I looked at that guy and I said, you know what? We're going to do this right here right now. Everyone's pissed off. I don't give a damn. Let's do it. And so... That was a monitor, a mouse, and a RAM. And that should come up through here any second. Any second. Just give it some time. Fast forward time. There it is. I said, we, we'll do this right here, right now. I don't care. And uh, he's like, all right, sir. Are you sure? I said, yeah. So he starts doing his thing. He goes from my feet. You know, and I've never gone through anything like this before. Never in my life have I ever, first of all, had something buzz in my area. And second of all, never had someone have a picnic in my front yard. That's what was happening right here, folks. This guy was going from the feet. From the feet, up the thighs. Hard. Hard. Put in my pants. I just stood there and took it. My legs were spread. And um, he starts to get the back side of me. How you doing? He gets the front side of me. How you doing? And uh, he gets to the point where it's time to go inside. <laughs> and 
and it's like 5.30 in the morning. And he's, he's about to go inside. And, um... The first, I don't know if this is like policy. This is probably policy or something. But before he goes inside my front area, he yells extremely loud. He says, eyes, eyes, eyes. Like, not enough attention was brought on me, right? But I think they say that for policy because they're going into my waistband. They're going into my pants. And the other agents need to be watching him in case for whatever reason i pull out a gat or something i don't know do i look like someone that's gonna pull out a gun on you um i get it safety measures but like at the same time everybody in line is looking and like oh my god this guy has to yell eyes 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 as he's going into this guy's pants he must really be doing something illegal you know i think that's not the case so he goes inside he yells, eyes, eyes, eyes. Guess what he found? He found nothing but Junior. He found nothing but Junior. He found Kaz Junior hanging out. And he pulls up my pants. And he says, all right, you look like you're good. You're good to go. Have a good day. And I'm like, thanks. Appreciate it, pal. I go on my merry way. Danielle watched the entire thing. And she stood there and she was freaking out because she's like, oh my God, what did he do? The first thing I say to her as I walk up to her is, you bought me a new pair of pants. <laughs> I start to like shift the blame. And I'm like, you son of a gun. You bought me these new pairs of pants. This new pair of pants is what got me in trouble. I don't even know how that's even possible. I don't know if that is a thing. But my new pairs of pants apparently set off the entire world. And I had to be groped. Had to be investigated. I had to be dissected. Because of my new pants. That's basically what I was saying to her. So she was like scared. Because she's like... She didn't know what was going to happen. Because like I've never gone through that. She's never seen that. And, um, even myself, like, I was like, like, I didn't care, dude. I was like, yeah, search me out here. I don't need to go to no private room. I'm not hiding anything. And I did not think he was going to go as deep as he did. Let's just be fair. <laughs> I did not think he was going to be going as deep as he did. And he, he did, he, he went deep. He went deep. He felt, he felt a lot. So there's a TSA agent out there that has done some things to your boy, you know? Um, I wish I would have gotten his name because I would give him a personal shout out. <laughs> but yeah, that that's just how like, that's just how the trip started. I don't think I needed to buy a medium for two phones. That's just how the trip started, right? So it's good to be home. <laughs> it's good to be home. Um, it's always good to be home. <laughs> now there is something that once you get back home, right? And, um, luckily, I busted my ass the weekend, you know, the week before. I don't know why I got into that. I busted my ass, right? I busted my ass last weekend. And, um, I made sure that I recorded. And, dude, it was... <laughs> it was hard, dude. It was so freaking hard to make sure that I had about three videos out every single day while I was gone. And I think it came off to the impression where people thought that I wasn't gone or didn't know that I was gone. Some people don't read, some people don't listen. And I know it's 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 impossible to reach everybody. I get it. But, like, I made it that good where I think people were telling me uh, they didn't know I was gone, you know? And um, that's a good sign, right? That's a good sign, obviously. But, my God, last weekend was so... It was so hard. Like, so, so hard to put out all that. To, to record, to edit, to do all that. And then to schedule, scheduling was kind of a nightmare because you don't want to mess up and all that anyways. Uh, but coming back home, and I think this this goes for like small YouTubers as well. It's all about routine, right? You get into a routine and, um, uh, you know, and I think it goes for people that go to work too. You go to work, right? And then like you have a week off, maybe, maybe two weeks off, hell. And um, 
it's hard to go back to work, right? It's always hard to like, oh God, I have to go to work tomorrow. I've been gone for a week. Good God, you know? And I, I, some people obviously work depending on where you, oh, I don't need that. I actually do need that. Depending on where you work, it could be like, oh, I don't want to deal with the people, you know? Um, but most of the time, I think it's like a routine. Like some people don't want to go back to the routine. I don't know. But some people are built for routines. But in my case, I'll be completely fair with you. I'm like, I get back home. I'm like, all right, got to got to go back into a routine. And I think why the reason why I was kind of like, F, here we go. Let's see when I put the two phones um, is because I think the way I left off is is the reason why. And what I mean by that is I left off during a first of all, very busy time. Uh, one, I had to, you know, make a ton of videos. And at the same time, it was next fest going on, which was a terrible time to like leave in the first place. Um, and so like it was next fest and I was only here for like one day of next fest technically. And um, I had to like cram and do my research on all these different games I needed to bring in and all that and uh, figure out which games would work for the channel and, and, and things like that. And I think that that's it. That's how I oh God, I don't think that's going to be big enough. Um, that's how I left off on the channel. So I immediately thought like, frick, here I go again, feeling like, oh, I'm going to have to go back to that intense workout again. Obviously, that's not the case. Um, and, you know, you know, I come back and I, I, and it gets a little bit normal, you know, and like the routine. Once you jump into the routine, it's easy, you know, um, it's just getting to the point of jumping into the routine. That can be very hard sometimes. By the way, the trucks here, I'm, I'll be able to pull this all off. Yeah, so that was good. Um, it was tough at first, like, oh, God, you know, but, you know, you just got to force yourself and I force myself. And here we are right back into the routine. And I feel good. I feel great. I feel wonderful. And um, it was such an awesome thing to see, like, people in the live stream the other day, you know, haven't talked, haven't talked to you guys in like a week, you know, and uh, it's good to see you. Very good to see you. Yeah. So when it comes to like small YouTubers, I think sometimes they have a hard time getting into a routine or if they get in a situation where they fall out of the routine, I think it's hard for them to get back into the routine. You know, there we go. I think sometimes that's where people just stop making videos and um, which 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 is which is sad and it sucks because there's a lot of uh, potential, you know, and, and there could be a lot of potential to smaller YouTubers that um, not necessarily. Well, I say there's a lot of YouTubers that don't get a chance and that's that's fair to an extent, like they don't get the exposure that they need, you know, and uh, things like that. But. I don't think they give themselves a chance sometimes and uh, YouTube is not a sprint. It is a freaking marathon. You know, it took me years, years. I'm saying why E A R S years to be able to have the traction that I have now, you know, um, <laughs> you're in it for the long haul, dude. You're in it for the long haul. And, um, People think that they can make videos every single day for two months and be fine. No. And then they stop because they don't see progress. That's not what it is. Not what it is. Almost $4,000 there. And that wasn't even that big of a load. That's pretty good. That's pretty good indeed. Yeah, so, you know. I think a lot of people cut themselves short sometimes and we lose out. We lose out a little bit on those uh, opportunities of... of meeting and seeing new creators every single year because every single year i know i'm not taking advantage of the promotion here every single year um there is gonna be a new youtuber that succeeds many many new youtubers that will succeed every single year you know and that's just how it is uh, that's the that's the opportunity that's the growth that's that's what youtube is every year Somebody is it's like youtubers on the rise, you know, but it took them probably years to get to that point of being youtubers on the rise You know what I mean? I don't know where I was going with that, but I, I kind of got lost in the sauce there. I went from getting grabbed at TSA the Where the hell are you at youtubers? I don't know <laughs> Yeah, so you know getting into a routine can be hard sometimes even for the for the best of us and um yeah but i'm glad i'm glad to be back 
Glad to be hanging out with you and playing some pack house. That's for damn sure. We have a lot of money to spend. And I'm going to buy a new item. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy resilience. Also what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy... Uh, even courier will wait another longer. Um, I'm going to buy... Um, we'll do will wait longer. We'll do another resilience. I think I'm going to do another new item. Like, we have so much money to buy. Now, we still need to buy the other competitor, but that will that will come in good time. Um, uh, discount. Let's do discount. Let's do chance to buy. And we'll leave it on that for 1200 please. 1200 Trebek. Orders. Print. Very good. Grab that. Awesome. Anyways, that's going to do it in today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Hack and Hell. So if you guys did, please make sure to hit that like. What a pleasure not to be with you today. And I will see you all in the next video, wherever that may be. And do as always. Take care. Yeah.